here, buddy. Flipping the uh, toaster. But it's not toast, it's a Pop Tart. On my uh, dad's home homemade camping toaster. Pretty nifty idea, huh? Got dad with me. Got tracker over there. Uh, not our typical shed hunting spot. <laughs> we're at a campground. And uh, we're getting ready to gear up and go look for elk sheds for the day. So what we did was we got ready um, yesterday evening. I just got back from a shed hunt with Connor. We got our gear together. I've been eyeballing this spot that looks good from uh, the maps, digital maps, but never been here before. So it's a gamble. Drove through the night, camped out in the back of the truck, and here we are this morning watching the sunrise, eating a Pop-Tart. So we'll check back in uh, in a minute. We'll start hiking real soon, try to get the most out of the day. Oh, well, kind of getting the first look at the area we're gonna shed hunt, looking over this big canyon. Looks pretty good, but we already have elk sign. That's a good, good thing. We got some bulls in here. I think it should only get better as we get over onto this next ridge. Well, first impressions as we're diving in, it's looking great. Um, there's not just sign where you're like, oh yeah, there's a couple elk in here. There's like, there's multiple elk in here, living in here. Uh, we got mud tracks, which is good. It shows it was from a few weeks ago. Only problem is there is a boot track. I'm assuming it's a shed hunter. You, you gotta expect that going into mid-April at this point. Like people have been out for a month and a half now. I messed up and didn't bring my radio today. So dad and I can't really communicate. So we just kind of came up with the game plan to meet up around three or four o'clock at the truck. It's supposed to get pretty windy up to 30 miles an hour today. It's starting in right now. Still on the hunt for the icebreaker. Ice is broken. Got a nice brown, looks like a six pointer. I could just see his back end up here. Got up, worked a draw up following elk tracks that kind of funnel through here. Splits onto a big ridge with a south face and then a little ridge. So I was like, I'll get up on this little ridge uh, just to check that. And then I can glass across to the other south face. Started panning and I mean, within, within seconds, I glassed up this brown, it's the left side. I don't think it's a giant, but it's a six point, it's brown. You can't ask for much more than that. But I'd have definitely missed it if I just hiked it. You can only see so much, right? There's advantages to both in shed hunting. That's why I try to, when people ask, like I kind of like to do both. I like to glass first and then go hike. You can tell they're in here now. Some fresh pee in a, a bed. There it is. <laughs> Good feeling to find an antler and break the ice and then to have it be brown on top of it. Can't ask for much more. Sure glad I glassed that up. It's a good little bull. He's got some nice thirds. Just a nice six point. Based on the sign, it looks like they're really working this ridge line. Not going too far off of uh, off the edge down that way. <laughs> got it. Yeah, nice, nice like uh probably 300 inch six point shed late March. 
Heck yeah, that other side's gotta be up here and there's definitely some more bowls, so throw it on the XO and do a little grading up here on this roof side. One zig and a zag. He's matched up. Good boy, tracker. It's gotta be the other side. To left. The other side was right below it. It's a or this is a right and the other side was a left right out of his bed and it looks like he's been using it since then that's cool right on this knob other side was laying just right over on the other side of that rock oh, i'm so pumped this is uh this is cool to to look at a spot on scout to hunt like analyze terrain access roads um, and match it up with areas i found them in before elevation all of that come in here, have a game plan and have it come together with a pretty sweet uh, set. That's cool. Yeah, nice set. Right out of his bed and then went down and got a bite to eat on that bush, dropped the other. Always easier done with two hands than one but this is kind of how I like to strap antlers on especially if you can get a set on these exo packs it works perfect you have the lid put the thirds under those straps then this main strap will connect right there under that third and then this bottom strap I bring in between the G1 and G2 that cinches on tight back on boot tracks up here, kind of where this ridge funnels. Makes you feel good when you just found a brown set and literally there's boot tracks 150, 200 yards away. Pretty rugged stuff. I lost elk sign for quite a ways and then crossed a big canyon, got back on another good looking ridge I've been scoping out. Locked onto this hard white. Just a little bowl. Not nothing big. A lot of a lot of elk sign where they're feeding up here, so there's gotta be some more. You can see there's definitely been some elk in here. What's crazy is I got over here thinking I'd be by myself and uh there's a boot track right on the spine of the ridge. So a little uh deflating right there when you make a big push thinking you'll get somewhere. There's a boot track, but they miss that. And if they can miss that, they can miss more. Last year's little five point raghorn. We're not too high. We're like 70, 800 feet maybe. So they could be a touch higher or lower like where I found those. Well, I'm not sure quite what to think. So I'm cutting across this high stuff and I'm gonna work back down to uh, probably where my dad is, some lower elevation, back where I found this shed for the last couple hours of hiking. See if I can't find anything there. There's some good pockets of feed. It's uh, just not quite the terrain I like to hike. I like to get on more ridge lines and slopes, but yeah, I was not expecting a shed right there. I just fell. I should have filmed it. Got mud all over me, had to clean off with and use a whole bottle of water over in a hole over here. Hit a boot track. He probably crossed right through this opening, right through the top of it. I branched off. We got a nice white six point. Looks like he pretty dense. Kind of short beamed, but good heavy antler. Yeah, it's a nice one. It's getting windy. Last year's up here, right on. Three o'clock now. Uh, Dad and I made the decision to meet up between three and four. So I'll probably get back to the truck by 3.30, 4 o'clock. 
There's a lot of boot tracks in here, um, which is discouraging, but I've still had a pretty good day despite that. Back on the road. It's bittersweet when you hit the road. Uh, you're tired, dehydrated, so you're excited, but you also know that pretty much means the end of the, end of the trip. So I'm gonna hit the truck, hopefully dad's back, and we'll be able to see what he found, and then that'll be it. Did you find any? Hey, you got a couple. Right on. Couple hard whites, huh? Hard whites, brown set, and then a couple whites. There's yours. And then... All right. Well, we're gonna hop in the truck out of the wind. Tracker's gonna take a big nap. We gotta drive home now. What a good day though. Dad found a couple. I found a few, despite the overwhelming amount of people that have probably hit this and turned into a good day. So about nine o'clock to, to 3.30 we hiked. There you go. Let's go. Edit out. Let's go with him. Oh, back home we go. Thanks for watching guys.